was the last night of finals and all across campus. Professors raced to submit grades, like people chased by Krampus. The last minute emails were all pouring in, panicked calls and weeping student visits adding to the din. But then at long last, when the evening had darkened and shadows on the snowy grounds were beginning to sharpen, the end of semester panic left over from those phone calls and printers found its last few moments in the whale-guarded office of Professor Ida Winters. Okay, so that's an 89, rounded to an A, and that's a 79, and that can stay a C. Should have proofread your paper and followed directions. All right, everything looks good. Everything's where it should be. Hit confirm and done! Oh my gosh, I am finally done. Final exams have been administered, final grades are submitted, and Christmas break can officially be... Again. We know you're in there, Ida. Open up. Uh, the door's unlocked. You can just come in. Whoa, where's the fire? What are you doing? I just finished submitting the last of my grades. Isn't that exciting? Everything's done. I'm finally, completely... What are you doing? Why are you... You don't need to blow out my candles. I wasn't going to leave them. And what? Let me guess. You haven't been checking your email again. I have, too, been checking my email. I just looked at it about five seconds How ago. about the emails not from the students crying and telling you all about how if they don't get an A in your class, Mommy and Daddy won't buy them a yacht named Barry for their overstuffed Christmas stockings? A yacht named Barry? You know you've had at least one student with a yacht. Ugh. The tuition to get in this place is exorbitant. Well, I haven't gotten any emails about any yachts, and of course I've, uh, well... Well... There's a small chance that I haven't been looking at administrative emails as closely as I should have been. Why, though? We're done with everything. The semester's over. Almost everything. <laughs> well, I don't like the sound of that. What do you mean? It seems that Millie, possibly to get back at us for the whole Halloween thing... And punish everyone else for unspecified reasons... ...has decided that we need to have a faculty photo before we leave today. What? Why? When is this picture supposed to happen? And where? How does my hair look? Your hair's fine. It's in the main liberal arts office, and as for when... Right now, this very instant, you're making us late. What? Why didn't you come to find me earlier? Where's my purse? Here. Can you get my hairbrush out of there? <sighs> Ugh, sure. Like she's gonna turn down the chance to rummage through your purse. Too bad she's made us so late. I can't properly go through this. Good God, what don't you have in this thing? I expect to find a desalination device if I look hard enough. Why would I have a- Hey! What? My hair's a mess, too. Your brush is right here, and I did all the work of finding it in your vault of endless things. I think it's only fair that I get first whack with it. You better not have lice or something. Why would I have lice? Stop waving the brush around. Oh my god, it's not like I live in a cave somewhere. You do realize that I live in an actual house, right? I don't just wander the grounds of this place looking for a location to rest my eternal soul. Put the brush down. Can I just have my brush? Uh, whatever. You're both idiots. Do you suppose there's any chance you can walk and brush your hair at the same time? Because we're going to be super late. And while I suspect that Millie's resources for tormenting us will be severely limited over Christmas vacation, I wouldn't doubt that she'll resume her wrath once spring semester hits. Is there still no word from Emily? Ouch. My hair is not fine and there are tangles everywhere. Give me that. I will do it. Uh, okay, that, ow! I barely pulled. Hold I'm just still. going to pretend you're not grooming each other like weird ow. birds. God. Anyway, no, ow. nothing from Emily, though she's going to have to come again. back soon Jesus. if she doesn't want to revolt hey. on her hands. Sorry. Millie's clearly over dealing with all of this stuff, especially since she's got little kids. Mm, nightmare scenario. All right, there. 
You look less woman in the attic than usual, so you should do fine. Thank you. That was inexplicably kind of you. That was inexplicably weird of you. I'm inexplicably inexplicable. Do we really have to do this? When was the email sent out? I'm not really dressed for a faculty photo. Excuse you. Do I look any more prepared? Uh, if I had known, I would have dressed much more unprofessionally than this. I wear the same thing every day. So much black. Don't forget, blue lipstick. You're like a frozen goth. You're wearing a bright orange cardigan and yellow shoes. I feel like I can stop there. I want students to see me coming. They need to know when to be afraid. Well, I'm afraid Millie is going to actually murder us and feed us to that family of crows that's taken up residence outside the student center. Let's go! And so our three heroes took off for their quest, leaving behind the attic office, Ida's little nest. They took care to shut and lock the door, as was Ida's regimen, and they bid farewell in the hall to the bedazzled whale skeleton. Oh, uh-huh. So this is where all my extra decorations went. The stupid whale skeleton. Don't call my whale stupid. I will call your stupid whale stupid if I want to. Stupid. Actually, he looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this garland, though. Like you said, it's all yours anyway. I just took the excess from when you basically gift-wrapped Anne's office last Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, please don't remind me. I'm still finding glitter everywhere. Here, I have a new necklace that's much better than that lanyard of doom. How do I look? You're wearing green and red tinsel over an orange sweater. Ear point. Looks great. Let's go. <laughs> Briar University was growing cold and dark in the early winter evening. Shadows lengthening in the halls, doors closed like rooms were sleeping. The ones still left open, and tugged closed as they passed, leaving them alone in the empty hallways, the semester over at last. But when they reached the humanities office, their peaceful calm turned to doubt. For the room, it was dark, and no one was about. Uh... Hello? Is anyone here? Millie! Oh, God. Was this seriously some kind of joke? Was she getting back at us for the whole sleeping through the Halloween meeting thing? I told her it was because of the tea. Which she clearly did not believe. And who could blame her? Nobody's here. Of course nobody's here. We've been set up. Well, if that's the case, then why are all the Christmas decorations pushed to the edges of the room? Oh yeah, like they pushed everything aside so it wouldn't show up in the pictures. What time was on the email? Right now, 4 p.m. This is exactly when... Where the hell did this come from? What? This painting of a boat that I'm standing in front of and pointing at. Yeah, I get that. That's got to be Millie's, right? Isn't that a steamboat? It wasn't here before. You know, because technically this is Emily's office. Why would Millie put a painting of a steamboat next to Emily's door? Oh, Millie has so much steamboat and Mississippi River stuff in her office that she could give it all away as gifts for years and still have three to five ashtrays shaped like Mark Twain's head. I bet it's revenge. Like, you know, hey, you're going to make me do all of your work for a whole semester without double checking with me. Fine. Here's a picture of one of the dumb boats I love so much. It's a good painting, though. It's really pretty. The painting was indeed of a steamboat, with wreaths and garland of leafy green. It was pulling away from a crowded Christmas dock. Only the end of the boat could be seen. It was pretty and festive, beautifully simple aesthetically, so it was a very strange thing to hang beside the office of Emily. I sure as heck wouldn't leave it there. I mean, it's Emily. She'll probably throw it away. Oh, I hope Millie didn't spend a lot of money on it. Maybe she knows the artist or something. This is a real painting. You can see the paint strokes on the dumb people on the dock who are watching this stupid boat leave. Don't touch it. I want to feel this guy's hat. 
look, why don't we go find Millie? Catch her before we leave? We can apologize profusely and then suggest that maybe she doesn't leave this painting here. Ugh, let's just take it with us. Nobody's going to be in this office between now and January. Everyone's definitely checked out. Well, grab it and let's go. I don't really want to have to chase her down on the roadway. Roger. Wait, should we cover it? I don't want it to get damaged. Ugh, fine. Sweater, you're getting sacrificed for the cause. There. Nice and protected. And so very orange. I like orange. Come on, we're gonna have to hurry if we want to catch her. Our office is all the way on the other side of the building. They hurried on their way, twisting and turning through the numerous halls. Briar University was quite like a maze. Many wondered if there'd ever been a plan at all. Snow had begun to fall again, collecting on the many window sills. The building grew darker and cold, the quiet following them like a chill. They picked up their pace, turning corners rather swiftly, and it wasn't much longer before they reached the office of Millie. Great. No lights. Looks like she's long gone. Nope. She's gone. Oh, whoops. She left her door unlocked? That's a... Whoa, that is some cold air. Wait, don't just go in. She left the window open. That's freaking dumb. Why did she open this in the first place? It's been freezing all day. Maybe she was so excited to leave that she just stove straight out the window. Well, I don't see anything outside. No Millie shaped holes. Not even a suspicious snowman. Wow, it's sick cold in here. I can't believe... Hey. What? Isn't that painting over the bookcase the same one you have under your arm? What? It looks really similar, though it wouldn't surprise me if there's more than one of this kind of painting. What is it called? Hudson River School of something? I think that's just a style, not a series of paintings dedicated to boats. Well, I guess you can just leave that painting beneath this one. Uh, okay, let me just... Ooh, whoa. Hmm. Uh, that's... What? Oh, what now? What so? What the heck? Before, the steamboat had been leaving a scene full of people aplenty. But now, the boat was gone, and the dock, it was empty. Didn't this thing have people in it? And a boat? Uh, maybe it was a trick of the light? It was a trick of the light that we saw a steamboat? When did you last have your eyes checked? Because that was not something they quizzed me on when I went. Well, I don't know. Where did the boat go then? They turned to the new painting, high up on the wall, featuring a boat like the other, garlands, wreaths, and all. But the setting had changed. Gone was the dock, a forest in its place, and a little log cabin stood alone, the only sign of life in the space. That boat looks really similar. But that's a different painting. Boats can't just jump paintings. Those decorations on it look really, really similar. And are there people sitting outside the log cabin watching the boat go by? I can't tell. They're really shadowy. If they're people, they're like bundled up. I think I can see their eyes. It's like little white pinpricks. Ugh. Ugh. Who would do that? Look, it doesn't matter. We've missed Millie, which means there's no reason to stay here any longer than we have to. No, you're right. Just drop the painting here. I'll leave her a note. Good idea. Dear Millie, here's your painting. Sorry we missed the department photo thing, but we also seem to have misplaced your boat. We don't really know what that means, except we're debating burning down the school when we go home. Sincerely. Sorry we missed you, found your painting, see you in spring. Okay, now let's get the hell out of here. Done. B, you didn't have to just dump it on the floor. Ugh, look, it's clearly possessed by demons. I don't need to do anything except get rid of it. If we had a nice fireplace around here, then we'd have a few more options. But for now, goodbye. 
Good grief. Just here, I'll lean it against the bookcase. There. Much better. Very nice. Now out, out, out. I'm locking the door and... Okay. Huh. Let's get our crap and skedaddle. Well, wait, my stuff's upstairs. I don't want to go alone. You're not going to go alone. We're going to get our stuff first and take the back staircase up to you. You're closer to the main stairs anyway. Oh, okay. Good. Ooh, hey. Can we get some cookies? Cookies? What? Christmas cookies. Let's stop by a bakery and get Christmas cookies. Are we all going somewhere after this? Uh, yeah. Creepy demon paintings aside, we gotta celebrate the fact that the semester is done. Why can't you ever plan anything more than three minutes before we all leave the building? Oh my god, why do you always have to fight with me? Because this happens every time. Ida trailed behind the others, lost inside her own thoughts. The paintings certainly bothered her, but the department photos had her at a loss. She suddenly remembered that, earlier in the day when looking for a snack, she had run into Horatio Henderset when she was on her way back. I don't want to go there for cookies. Oh my god, why? Because every time we've gone there, they've burned everything. You never... Hey, 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 you know what? What? Let, let's see if Horatio's around. What? Uh, why would we do that? Well... I saw him earlier, and he didn't mention any pictures. Maybe that's because he's in a different department. So are you, and you knew it was happening. That's because I read your email when you're out of your office. Of course you do. <laughs> well, we can see if he's in his office. I'd assume not, though. Ugh. Walk faster. I hate going by the art department now. At least they've been putting up a lot of student art. That helps me avoid looking at the doors to the main art room. Some of these are really good. Are these oil paintings? Do you think they're dry? Don't touch them! I like touching artwork, okay? I'm betting Briar University doesn't have an alarm system. You are so strange. I mean, really, who looks at a work of art and thinks, gosh, what I really want to do is... Now what? That... that painting. Across from the locked double doors that hid the depths of the art room abyss was another hanging painting, far too large and ornate to miss. The steamboat was back, against a new winterscape and another waterway, but the boat and this scene came to a stop on a bank with footsteps leading away. You know, I'm not sure what makes me angrier, that Katya is outright ruining my life, or the fact that she's also ruined art right along with it. Okay, that's definitely the same steamboat. It's got the same structure, it's got the same wreath. The lights are off, though. There are little footsteps. See, right there in the snow. They're heading toward... The woods. Great! Are there other wooded paintings around here, like where it might continue? Who cares? I don't care. Nobody cares. We're going to get our stuff, and we are going to get out of here. You're just going to leave it? Yes. How are you not at least a little curious? After what happened on Halloween, I am negative amounts of curious. I don't want to know what any of this is or what the hell it's supposed to mean. It's all batshit insane and I just want to go out and get a goddamn cookie before we all drive our separate ways, get buried under snow, and hide away until the new year. Ow! Okay, okay, get your nails out of my arm, we'll go. Part of Ida wanted to protest, as something clearly was happening here. Would she be able to spend her whole winter break with this situation still so unclear? She'd be home for Christmas safely by her parents' fire in a mere few hours, but still, it would hang in the back of her mind the mystery within the school's old towers. But, she thought as she stared into the deep darkness of those painted trees, she wasn't ready to lose herself in the woods. Better, for now, to be escapees. Can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm with B. Let's go. I could use some sugar. Excellent. Best thing I've heard all day. Oh god, here we go. 
Onward, Christian soul old jurors. I'm not a Christian. It doesn't matter. It's a marching song. Two, three, march. The teachers go marching three by three. Hurrah! Hurrah! Hurrah. Hurrah. The teachers, the go, teachers go marching, marching two, two by, by two. two. Hurrah! Hurrah! Hurrah. 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 The teachers, the teachers go marching, go marching one, one by, by uh, one. That's, the, uh, well, wait a second. Well, that was a grim song choice. This is why none of us teach musical theater. It's fine. The world isn't ready for my sweet dance moves. And uh, finally, I return to my domain. And thank God, Dot Mudgridge, listen to me. Oh, wow, I feel like I just walked into the sun. Is every light on in this library? Just the overheads. I wanted to be the one to turn them off. Hold on, I'll get my stuff. Hurry up, my retinas are detaching. Anne? Huh? What do you think the paintings mean? I don't know. I mean, maybe I suspect, but I don't know. I can work with suspicions. Well, obviously we're supposed to go somewhere. And find something. Right, but everything feels jumbled somehow. We're getting different messages, then I don't think they mean the same thing. Exactly. I don't know how I'm supposed to react. Am I supposed to be scared? I mean, of course I'm supposed to be scared. Exie's gone. That kettle person is who knows where. And Emily's vanished to some far corner of the earth. But... I don't feel the same way about these boat paintings as I did the one Kettle took with her. No. These aren't scary somehow, not really. They're almost... It's a rain, which I think scares me more. Did you get everything? Yeah, I'll hit the lights on the way down to your office. I don't know. I, I don't know what to do with any of this. I don't know how to react. Am I supposed to be intimidated or am I supposed to be intrigued? I think both are on the table. After Halloween, I'm fully freaked out. But I know what you mean. I still want to know what's going on here. I mean, curse of the librarian. I will learn all your secret shit, school demons. You're turning into Sherlock Holmes again. It is my business to know what other people don't know. That is startlingly accurate. Either way, I think whatever's happening here now is the wrong time. We don't want to delve further into this with absolutely everyone else gone and not expected to come back for over a month. That's just insanity. And oh, god damn it. What? What now? We were on a roll. There's a note taped to my door. Oh, great. Is there a sticker? No, it looks like Horatio's handwriting. That does indeed look like something from an 1842 ship's manifest. <laughs> I wish you left more lights on. I can't read it. We're in the stacks. They're supposed to be gloomy and unwelcoming. Unlock your damn office and turn on the light. Oh, fine. <clears throat> it says, I left you a voicemail. Don't forget to listen before you go. Oh my god, he left you a note telling you to check your voicemail. Guess that means it's gone home. I don't see his lights on. <laughs> oh boy, I keep forgetting how festive your office is until I come in and actually look at it. Uh-huh, it's a disaster. It's the magical wonderland, and you're welcome. Hurry up and play the damn voicemail die. Hold on, I have to get all the glitter off first. As I said, you're welcome. Season's greetings, Professor Die. I had hoped to catch you before you left for the winter recess, but such is life. I simply wish to inform you that, once again, a package was incorrectly delivered to me. Upon closer examination of the label, I determined that it was meant for yourself, Professor Winters, and Librarian Why? West. Why? Why is it always Librarian West? Literally nobody talks like that. Given the respective locations of our offices, I reached the decision that it would be most effective to deposit said package outside of Professor Winter's office? What? I was afraid it might react poorly to the cold down here, and Librarian West's office is very much at the heart of our library services. Uh, as you know, 
overwhelmingly central location. Regardless, season's greetings to one and all. I hope you all get exactly what you asked for from good old St. Nick. I must dash. I'm scheduled to play Santa at the local bookstore near my domicile. The happiest of holidays to you. So... I mean, just hold on, please. I'm trying to picture Horatio dressed as Santa Claus. I know, it's not working. Like, at all. He's so tall and skinny. And just full of buckles and elbow patches. While I agree that Horatio dressed as Santa Claus is something I never, ever want to see, why do I now have a package outside of my office? What package? Who's sending us stuff? Let me shut down my computer and we'll just... Oh, wait. What? What? Email update. This says the photo thing has been canceled. What? When? Uh, as of five minutes ago. So after the dumb thing was supposed to take place. Millie is trolling us. This was all a setup. I don't even care anymore. Let's just get the hell out of here. Phone flashlights on. We're taking the whale stairs. They took to the stairs behind the stacks that for so long had been locked, until Beatrice West had broken in, to approximately nobody's shock. They were uneven and creaked, the wood warped long ago, and were lit by a lone window, hazy glass filtering in a cold blue glow. They went as quickly as they dared, and finally reached the landing's flat, and pushed open the door to the welcome sight of the skeletal whale in its tinsel and hat. We meet again, suspicious whale skeleton. He is not suspicious. He is very handsome and seasonal. He's also got a package behind him. Wrapped in brown paper. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Come on. Please don't fall back down the stairs. We'll probably go straight through them. Is there a unicorn sticker? Uh, yep. All right, Di. Same deal as before. You hold an eye rip. Uh, Ida, want to hold your flashlight up? Not really. Great. Here we go. Oh, God. It's another damn door. In the first painting, the door had been open, a black pit that waited in silence. But this door was closed, as if patiently awaiting their guidance. The wooden door was made up of dark black painted slats, and curved along the top like a garden doorway, without any plants. Around the walls and the floor of the door was regular old wood with no paint, it looked like something from this very school, as if somewhere inside they might find this gate. I like absolutely nothing about this painting. Does this Katya person just sit around painting doors all day? What are we supposed to make of this one? It's closed. It looks like there's a lock on the door. See, there's like a padlock or, or something keeping it shut. Well, that's great. I feel much better knowing that the creepy door from the creepy lady who sends us creepy articles is firmly locked. <laughs> maybe it's keeping her out. Ooh, maybe it's some kind of promise. Like, hey, everybody, just letting you know I finally locked this shit down. Somehow I doubt that. Ugh, quit pessimisting all over my theories. A, that's not a word. B, you're the pessimist here. I don't know, Anne. Maybe B's right. I don't feel the same way about this painting as I did with the last one. Exactly. I mean, I still hate absolutely everything about it, but I don't feel... As creeped out. Mm -hmm. Like the last one made me feel really weird. My head got all fuzzy. Well, this one doesn't feel great. I'm not... Afraid of it. No. That's all well and good, but I'm just pointing out that if this door is going to do anything, I think it's going to open for us to go in. Well, how the hell do you know that? Uh, she left us another piece of blackout poetry. 
Oh, not that ripper shit again. Oh my gosh, what does it say? It says, I let you in. What? Yeah. I let you in? Never mind, I feel creeped out now. I don't want to be let in. I want to be let safely out here, away from all the batshit crazy. Why does this catch up person think we want to be anywhere near her deranged brain? I don't know. Psychotic narcissism? We're not taking this with us, right? God, no. We can leave a note or something telling anyone who comes across it to get rid of it or store it away in a closet or something. Good idea. Hold on, I'll just... I'll tape a note on it or something. Uh, <laughs> not sure what to do with this. Um, feel free to stick it somewhere out of the way. Uh, happy holidays. Fine. Just hurry up. Grab your stuff. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll just purse, coat, work bag, and, uh, oh, I, I need tape. The ice caps are melting. Oh, shut and... up. Here, stick this on the frame. Why is there a candy cane taped to the side? Because I feel bad forever's going to get stuck moving this cursed painting over the holidays. Oh, your decency sickens me. As Ida stepped back to look around the little attic tower space, Anne affixed the note and candy to the frame, pressing the tape to keep it in place. Outside, the wind picked up, giving the window panes a shudder. And Ida watched the snowflakes swirl, those glittering specks all a flutter. It was true that the world was very beautiful and strange. But sometimes, maybe it was better to take the chance to disengage. Okay, are we good? Can we leave now? I'm reaching the point where I don't even want sugar cookies anymore. I just want rum. Before that, though, I'd just like to take a moment to wish this goddamn place the merriest of Christmases and to hope that it sits here and rots during break so that when we get back, none of us have to deal with any of this anymore. That seems unlikely. All right, everyone ready? Yeah, I just... Wait. Now what? I can't leave him here with it. What? Who? Help me move him into my office. But you want to move the whale skeleton? Oh my god. Don't worry, I'm not leaving you out here with that spooky painting. Ida. Find the release for his wheels. <sighs> All right. Ugh, you guys are... Watch out for the door frame. Be gentle. I don't want him to fall apart. I think he'll be fine. Push. Move a little to... Go left. Further left. Uh, that's too far left. Ow! No shit, Santa Claus. Just put him on the rug in the middle. He'll stay warm that way. Ida, he's been dead for a hundred years. He's wearing a festive hat. That's the middle. Stop pushing. All right, wheels locked. Your festive whale skeleton is secure. Now can we please go? I'm right behind you. As the others went back out into the hall, Ida turned one last time and adjusted the whale's hat as, outside, the clock tower began to chime. She whispered into the still office air, Merry Christmas, whale skeleton. And then she locked the door securely behind her and followed her friends down the stairs. Hey! Hello. Here's the credits! Wait, oh shit, who's in this thing? Uh, Academic Asaurus is a bird stuff production in association with the Creepopolis Creeps. Okay. For more information, you can visit us on our website at academicthesaurus.wixsite.com slash home. There, you can find character art and episode summaries and vaguely terrible actor bios. Wait, we never did these. Oh, crap. Uh, or you can visit our Instagram, which I actually made a plan for updating in the new year. <laughs> Fancy. Our performers for this episode are Marina Matlock as Ida Winters. Amanda Von Kilton as B. West. And Mary O'Reilly as Anne Dye. This episode also featured Dave Opilka as Horatio Henderset and Ramona Morir as the narrator. She's awesome. She does everything. 
She also went through and fixed up these rhymes for me because they were nowhere near as good before she got her hands on them. So thank you, Ramona. Otherwise, I wrote and edited this thing, yada, yada, yada. The theme music for Academic Azores is Shake It by Jazar. It's what you're listening to right now, except Mary did all the weird jingling music stuff. I have a MIDI keyboard now. Ooh. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for, for listening, listening to Academic Azores. <laughs> Okay, if you enjoy our show, because we sure do, please subscribe <laughs> and leave us a review on iTunes or a thumbs up on YouTube or a comment on our website. It would really mean a lot for us to know you like the show. This is the official conclusion of season one. For real, we're done. Mary has to write season two now. Also, she may be working on a Sherlock Holmes thing. Who's Mary? I don't know any Marys. Mm, suck it up and spread some holiday cheer, damn it. Happy, Happy holidays! P.S. Santa Claus is a CIA spook. Oh, God.